You're going on our YouTube channel. Jess, give us the backstory on this one. So, we're driving up yesterday, we're riding up the Shibugamu. My brake was a little bit soft in the morning, so I figured I'm due for new brake pads. I'm like, okay, when I get back from the trip, I'll get it done this week. Yeah. We get to the relay just in Chape, about 60K out of Shibugamu, and it was fine. And then we leave the relay and I had no brake to the bar, nothing. So I limped it all the way here, and I'm like, there's no way I can ride back to Shibugamu. So we put brake, uh, brake fluid in, yeah. and we got a little bit of pressure, but it's it's just the piston pushing with pressure. Like, there's no brake pad. Yeah. So we found a guy that was able to take our sled into his garage last night, thaw it out, and put on a brand new set. <laughs> there we go. Good morning, everyone. It is day three. Uh, we're just getting ready to leave Shibugamu, Quebec. Had a great stay at Hotel Motel Nordic. And now we're gonna head back the way we came yesterday. So a good 465 kilometers. Yeah, I'll put it to you this way, the easiest 465 kilometers I've ever done. Uh, Cause a lot of the trail is super straight and quick. Uh, but we had an awesome time. I uh, came into town and I was desperately looking uh, I was desperately looking for a um, someone who could put a new brake pad on my sled. The dealer's closed on Sunday. So I looked, I looked, I looked. I found a guy in town, and he came, he picked up my sled, put it in his heated garage, and uh, he changed my brake pad overnight and brought it back for us at 8 o'clock this morning. Everything's good and ready to go. So he really saved us because I would not have ridden it back without a brake. I would have probably had to float it back to uh, New Liskard, which would have been ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so he came, brought it, got everything fixed. We're all good to go. So a huge shout out to him. Uh, I was actually connected to him through Shibugamu Adventure. A guy named Dex, super awesome guy, runs an adventure backcountry tour company out of Shibugamu. And he also has an awesome place uh, for accommodations to stay. So definitely check out Shibugamu Adventure on Facebook. Because if not for him connecting us with this guy, I would probably not be riding the next two days, which would suck. So huge thanks, um, but yeah, so we're on the local trail coming out of Shibugamu here. We're taking a little bit of a different route today uh, just to experience some more trails up here. But man, we were all, all the boys were speaking last night and I've never ridden trails like this. I've never ridden trails this good. We had the best day yesterday, Mike agreed, the best day we've ever had on a sled. <laughs> Like that 460 kilometers felt like an easy 320. It was insane. The trails were perfect. You can see there's a huge abundance of snow here. We went off trail for a second yesterday because I missed uh, a turn and I couldn't even back up. I We had to turn it around and you probably saw the video already of Costa getting absolutely buried in his uh, on his Red Devil. So <laughs> there's an abundance of snow, but yeah, the trails are mint. Super excited to do the same ride back today. Uh, we're just taking a little bit of a scenic route around Shibugamu, because why not? We wanted to do the direct route yesterday, just to see how long the 462 exactly kilometers took. And now that we know that it's really like, you arrive by 5.30 if you're taking lots of breaks. So <laughs> we're going to do a little bit more kilometers today, maybe like 480, basically the same. Uh, but yeah, so that the fact that I didn't have a break those last 50k, uh, took, made it take way longer to get to the hotel because I was crawling, right? Like, I, if I came up to a turn, I couldn't break. So I was taking it really easy. And that's why we, you, you didn't see any footage ending the day yesterday. It kind of ended at that uh, warm-up shack or that relay, that clubhouse, uh, just because I was so focused on riding and not missing a turn that I didn't, I didn't turn on the GoPro and neither did Mike. But uh, yeah, so today we'll bring you guys lots of content on our run back. It's not snowing as hard today, so you probably have better visibility. Uh, but yeah, this is stunning over here. Nice hills, look at this. Wow, just beautiful. What an awesome area. If you guys are looking to ride uh, in Quebec, definitely check, uh, check out Shibugamu. It's not for the faint of heart though, I'll tell you that much. Like, you think the Abitibi Canyon is remote? This is even more remote. Like there was 300 kilometers where there's basically nothing except for a little gas station. So <laughs> you're in the middle of nowhere. That's why never, ever, I would never even consider riding this by yourself. Definitely have other guys with you. 
um, just in case something happens, you never know. But uh, yeah, if you're coming, thinking about Northern Quebec, definitely check out Chibougamou. This is the best riding I've ever done in my life. And Mike agrees, Mike's been riding for over 25 years. Uh, Jeff's been riding for over 35 years. And they both say this is the most incredible riding they've ever done in their life on a sled. So I don't know how much more I can boost out Chibougamou. It's just unreal. Uh, I know Jeff from STV uh, did a feature on Chibougamou the other year. He's not wrong. This is an insane place to ride. It's absolutely awesome. This area of Quebec has not seen rain <laughs> since October. It was funny. I was speaking to her. I'm like, have you guys had rain? She's like, yeah, we had rain in October. And I'm like, during the winter? She goes, no, no, no. That doesn't happen. It only snows during the winter. <laughs> so a completely different climate up here. We're north, north, north. Okay, so we're just coming up off of the local trail. We're about to turn on the 93. We actually just passed both groomers on the left. They got a husky and a, a tractor. Uh, but yeah, that's an awesome local trail to experience. Boy, am I glad that I have brakes. Yeah, so we're turning left, uh, right on the 93. And back home we go. We're back to Amos we go. But yeah, the trails have tightened up today from the negative 30 overnight. They're not so soft, they're perfect. You guys notice that? Like I'm not sliding really. But these trails are so impeccably signed. And the setup is perfect. Like, is there, can you ask for better than this? In any way? No, because fresh groom wouldn't be good. It would be too hard. You want it lightly broken in. That's what this is. This is lightly broken in fresh groom. Fresh groom is actually not ideal. It feels good, but you slide all over the place or you bite really hard. Because there's three trails technically that connect the 93 into Shibugamu. We took the one all the way west, which is the straight one. And then we just took a little bit of a windy one on the way out. But that was awesome. I don't regret that at all. That was perfect. And now back to the straight and fast. Oh, Andrew got a little air there. <laughs> I saw that, Drew. This reminds me a lot coming out of Hearst in the power line. Except this is a little more hilly. Wow. You can see the trail down for miles. Mike is saying that like this type of riding is what the mock is made for. I 100% agree with you. Quick stop for gas in Chape, right beside Hotel Opemiska. Uh, and now we're gonna continue to stop at that relay for a brief coffee break. Or just a warm-up that we stopped at last night where my brake went to shit. <laughs> and then uh, continue trucking along. How's the ride, Mike? Hey? How's the ride? Pretty good. A little chilly? Is it a little chilly? Uh, just a bit. <laughs> I put the muffs on. My hands are definitely a little cold. My hands are great. <laughs> you also because not you have two it. hands in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're making fun of my sausage fingers. Yes, yes, yes. I get it. I, I'm the punching bag usually. I, I serve as the punching bag to make everyone happy. Thank Jeff you. just... <laughs> Best trails of my life. Best sure. trails of your life? Oh, yeah. yeah. No Nothing compares, that. eh? I don't, like, I don't need to ride anywhere else. Like, <laughs> just come up here twice a year? Yeah. Unreal. I don't want to go back to Havelock and do 380 kilometers of this. <laughs> <laughs> All day, yeah. It was brutal. Whew. Okay, let's hit the trail. Nice that they split up the trail here a little bit. Mike's saying, he goes, he likes it too until someone hits the divide. You can see how much it's blowing from the bumps on the side of the trail. From like the, the waves of snow. Okay, so we're on the rail bed. It's basically like this all the way uh, with a couple turns. It's basically pretty straight all the way to the gas station in about 120k. This is what it looks like. Really easy to put on some high K. All right, what's going on, boys and girls? Whew, she's a cold one today. Look, oh, I just missed the trail. <laughs> All right, fellas. Okay, Stop fellas. Let's hit it. I gotta make a pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so we're just hitting our uh, our gas stop here in Desna Zedville or something. I can't remember the name of it. Really, really small town. Not too much happening here. This is basically the only place to uh, to get gas here. Quick snack. And we're gonna continue on. We've only done about 170K so far. So we got lots more to go. Oh man, last night was crazy. We had a good time. We rolled down the streets with our sleds, went out for dinner, great restaurant there in uh, Shibugamu. Place was actually packed, couldn't believe it. So I'm sure you guys heard, obviously we always have incidents on all these trips. There's gotta be at least something that goes wrong. So we had uh, one issue with uh, Jesse's sled yesterday. You know, he's put a bunch of K on it already and his uh, brake pads were worn down pretty good. So he had no brakes last night. <laughs> no brakes rolling into Shibugamu for the last 40K. So pretty awesome, but uh, you know, we got ourselves out of a situation that could have really sucked. Like, that could have really ended his trip for the most part. And, uh, you know, he may have had to had figure out a way to get his sled back. But uh, we ended up basically getting connected with somebody locally in town there. And they actually came and picked up his sled from the hotel. And... They took it home with them. They basically had the parts, switched out the pads for them, and brought it back to us uh, this morning early around about uh, 7.30. So pretty amazing people. You know, we had no clue what we were gonna do. So it ended up working out really well for us. And now we're all back on the trail and we can continue the trip, right? Otherwise it would have been, uh, pretty sticky situation you can feel the cold today penetrating regardless of what you're wearing you just a little bit of chill there's a big wind that's uh, just roaring today and it's making it for a chilly ride for sure once again thank God for the oxygen it's working flawlessly today we're just making our way back to Amos tonight and the hot tub sounds like a really good plan <laughs> after about a thousand K of riding in two days so that's the plan for tonight hot tubs and beers and hopefully a good meal somewhere all right so we are uh, coming into some snow now definitely picking up on the trail, you can even see a couple centimeters. Uh, making it for a little bit harder conditions for steering and whatnot, but still doing okay. We're just passing through this small town here. Uh, continuing to head uh, west on 93 for about another 70 clicks until we get to our destination. up here now with all the snow coming down trails are perfect so you can just see you can't see the tracks anymore there's just one track ahead of me but other than that it's all fresh that's right Jesse's just in my ear saying as Kenny would say hammer down welcome to mock country so yeah, I was uh, talking to Dave Vincent last night from my dealer, Team Vincent Motorsports, and he's going to order me up a new uh, Renegade 850 XRS, fully loaded with all the goodies. We're going to get the 10-inch gauge, we're going to get the smart shocks with it. Oh, it is snowing! How's it going, Gossa? <laughs> <laughs> Salami, we're all good to go. Jeff? This is just perfect. <laughs> perfect conditions, perfect day. Yeah, we're Sorry, just... It doesn't get any better. We're just at a warm... <laughs> perfect group of guys <laughs> sucking down some sausage. Speak for yourself there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> 
50k out of LaBelle, and then we'll stop there at the pizzeria for lunch. <laughs> oh, who put that up there? Mm, slut addicts. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, so about another 50k or so uh, to LaBelle. Have some lunch and uh, gas fill up. It is snowing nicely. This is, I love this part here with all the trees. Yeah, I get that, Andrew. It definitely does remind me of the Jenny Loop, too. Especially this part here, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Particularly this section that, that goes directly uh, east from uh, the polar bear den, right? Yeah. Okay, boys, we're making a left here. This is the trail that cuts off. Nice lineup of sleds here. Our favorite place, Quevillon Pizza. Look at all those machines. It's a whole lot of dues and a single Polaris. The single lonely Polaris. Just looking at Jesse and mine mud flaps and you can see the uh, Plastic this year not holding up so well. He's missing a K, and I'm missing my uh, the O. Kind of ridiculous. I'll hopefully get those warranted. Gonna head over to uh, the Petrocan across the street. We'll grab some gas, and then uh, back on the trail for about another 200 200 K ish to get home. Back to Amos. Another great poutine lunch. Have a good ride, guys. Oh, I probably need my saddlebag. <laughs> probably be good if I brought this, eh? <laughs> as soon as I saw my sled, I'm like, I'm missing a bag. Everyone good to go. Back on the trail we go. Indy VR1 850, a TCAT, and a Lynx Rave. Quick check to make sure everyone has permits. I'm happy the police are out here doing their job. It is a free weekend, but they want to make sure you have your free weekend pass uh, so that you have eligible insurance, because it's important you have insurance when you're on the trail. Nice little brief stop by our friends at Quebec Police. Just making sure that all our paperwork's in check. Which it is, of course, because we don't ride without permits, nor should anyone. Uh, but yeah, they're just doing their job, making sure the trails are safe and everyone has their insurance and permits. We've done about 285k, about 190 left to go, uh, but it's been awesome. Trails are mint. As you can see, like, look at this. Doesn't get better than this, folks. It's just perfect. You're probably tired of me saying that, but all the trails are just outstanding. So warm up shack number one after lunch, check. And now we're going uh, through Cemetery. We got gas uh, a little bit south of there and then one more warm up shack on our way back. Everyone's just getting their shit on and uh, we'll be on the trail. How's it going boys? Hmm? I think we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting to be that time. Yeah, it's about 5.30. We got about 75k to go. Jeff, how are you? I'm great. It's been a long day. I'm great. <laughs> you're great? Glad to hear it. Costa, you're a little quiet back there. I'm ready for my earplugs. Yeah. Ready to get back to the hotel, have some beers, have some food, relax, maybe hop in the hot tub. Yeah. Definitely have some beers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I found my earplugs. Is that any earplugs? Good. Just heading out from the warm up shack, our last one. Gas stop in about 15k and then all the way to the hotel for another 70 or so. Mike's on uh, Black Betty right in front of us. Right in front of me. Holy snow dust, there's a lot of snow. I love these oxygen helmets for that light. You can't see the, the brake light, but you can see the light on the helmet always. It's, we're basically breaking trail here just because of the amount of snow that's fallen. <laughs> Pretty impressive, not gonna lie. 
It's like a whole other climate up here. <laughs> Mike has so many bags on that thing. <laughs> that thing probably weighs 800 pounds right now. Woo! Can't see anything. This day has been a great day of riding again. Only issue with today is we're seeing quite a bit of snow. So the, uh, the visibility isn't great. That's really been our only challenge. Uh, you combine that if you're riding behind in the snow dust, kind of sucks, but um, still all in all, great, uh, another great day of riding. Some funky stuff happening with the mock, but I learned that it's not just the mock, but when you're riding behind other people in their snow dust, my gauges were turning off and on and just really annoying. So you can't ride right in snow dust. You gotta be back a little bit. Looks like we're riding in no man's land here. It's so desolate. There's like nothing out here. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Shabugaboo. Let's go to Shabugaboo. <laughs> oh man. Good times. Alright, so we've just arrived at the Amosphere again. Great ride today, another 470 kilometers. How are the boys all feeling? Everybody good? Everybody feeling good? Good stuff. There's Drew rocking his new 850. Yeah. yeah. Drew, how's the ride today, buddy? Yo, that track spring kicked my ass. <laughs> Differ? Yeah. A little too much? Oh, way too much. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, fun fact. So, so I'll tell you right now, that's why I love Smart Shocks. Honestly. You don't have to worry about that kind of shit. You don't have to dial it in for every single piece of terrain you're running, right? Yeah. Smart Shocks will dial in on any kind of terrain. You just pick your setting. You just know. I was telling Jesse, like, going over this, not those that last section that was bad, like coming into the hotel, but before that, all those stutters, you just rock it across it, man. Like it's it's nothing. It's amazing. It's soft when it needs to be. And stiff when you need it. That's why I'm I'm totally sold on them. I think they're great. Jesse's not 100% there yet on them, but I'm sold on them. They're awesome. That is by far the most capable four-stroke I've ever ridden, for sure. It's just it's a great sled. It's, so good with champagne. it's great. They did a good job. It just needs 40, 50 more horsepower. Anyway, we're going to settle in. Thanks for riding along with us, guys. We will, uh, we're going to grab, uh, we're going to grab our hotel room keys and settle in and then go have some dinner and hopefully a couple of beverages. Thanks for riding along with us, guys. We'll see you. If you like that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel where we release content on everything snowmobiles. Also, hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.